Hi, I'm Amy and I'm 31. And well, when I was about 21, I started a diet, which started off fairly sensibly, um, but then got out of control. And I really thrived on losing weight and felt like I was achieving something by getting thinner. Um, and what was meant to be a sensible diet to lose half a stone or a stone ended up just progressing and I lost more and more weight. And it went on, it was actually a couple of years before I went to a really low weight. When I got to about seven and a half stone, my family really started to notice, but I hadn't noticed it then. I, I didn't think it was a major problem and I wasn't unhealthily underweight. Um, but it, by then it sort of become a bit of an obsession and it was something that I couldn't stop. I did go and see a doctor then because my family were worried, but because I was just eating healthy, low-fat food, he didn't think that there was necessarily a problem. So it carried on until I got to a really, really low weight, and then I was aware of it and admitted to myself and to my family that I did have anorexia, and then I started to seek help from a local eating disorders unit. And it was around then that they started doing tests to see what effect that that was having on my body. Um, and in order to get onto an eating disorders program, I had a number of tests which showed up low bone density and osteoporosis in my spine. And when you said that um, you, you, you started sort of a diet because you, you wanted to lose like a mm. stone, stone half, what, what kind of was it that made you think you needed to lose that weight? Was it, was it just you felt it yourself? That you yeah, I think. It was a time in my life where I'd just finished university and whenever I used to meet up with university friends, I always felt like we were comparing ourselves to each other. And I was still living at home. I didn't have a particularly worthy job as I saw it. And I just felt rubbish about myself. I didn't feel attractive. I didn't feel successful. I didn't have a boyfriend, I lived at home. Everything about my life seemed to be, well, to compare negatively with other people. Um, I think it probably, it probably wasn't any worse than anybody else's life, but it was just my spin on it was that things were really bad. And I couldn't get the job that I really wanted. I couldn't move out, I couldn't get an amazing boyfriend, but I could lose weight. So that was what I focused my energies on improving, was what I felt to be attractive and to lose some weight and not to be, I felt like I was a, about a stone overweight. So I thought well, that's one thing that I can do something about. And it's a typical kind of January, new year, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lose weight. So it's kind of stemmed from there really. And um, you said you, you went to a sort of local eating sort of thing. Can you just tell us about, a little bit about that and, and um, you know, how long you were at the clinic, how long mm. you were involved with the clinic? Well, I'm still involved with the clinic now. So um, I started going to the clinic when I was about 25. So I've been involved with the clinic for six years now. Um, it started off with just appointments for them to check up um, and see how I was doing, having blood tests and that kind of thing. Um, but then eventually I was put onto a full-time program. So I was in a recovery program for people with eating disorders for a year. That was always as a day patient, but it was very intense. It was actually seven days a week, eight in the morning to late at night. So I'd eat all my meals there. Although I didn't sleep there, most of my life was spent there. And I did that um, for nearly a year, sort of tailing off towards the end of that year. And then um, I was lucky enough to keep my job open, so I went back to work. I was at a normal weight by then. Um, but unfortunately, I had another relapse and ended up back at the same eating disorders unit a year later, having lost some of the weight that I'd put on. And so I spent a further year doing another day patients program. And fortunately, this time it was successful, and I haven't really looked back since. I left there. Um, about three years ago now. So ever since then, it, I've been able to maintain my weight. Um, I was going to a group there once a week, a kind of recovery group, up until about two weeks ago. And so I've just finished that year and a half of a recovery group. 
but they're still there as a support. I've got a follow-up meeting and that kind of thing. So I've been really fortunate that in my area, the services for eating disorders are really good. And what, you, you talked to us a bit about um, the fact that you'd had a, a bone scan um, and that there was osteoporosis mm. identified. Have you had any, um, any sort of complications? Have you broken any bones? Mm. Have you just tell us a little bit about, about yeah. firstly, what it, what it felt like when you, know, when you were diagnosed with osteoporosis, yeah. how you felt, and then if you've had any, um, anything because of that, any consequences of mm. that well, I was first diagnosed with osteoporosis when I was extremely underweight. I was 32 kilos at the time and everything was so, I was very delusional about everything. I couldn't really take any information in. And I remember that I was with my dad and he said, you know, the fact that you've got osteoporosis, does that not make you want to get better? But it, it didn't. I, would, you know, I knew that I, my heart was at risk. I knew that I had osteoporosis, but none of those things really penetrated because I was so obsessed with not eating and so starved. And it was only really once I started to get better that it kind of dawned on me. And because at that time then I wanted to do all the things that everybody does. I wanted to go out running, skiing, cycling, all the active stuff that when you're really underweight you can't do anyway. Um, so once I got better, I was just at acting like a normal person going out and doing stuff um, and the first time I became aware of the sort of fragility of my bones was when I went to a roller disco with my friends and it was just it's um, like a 1970s roller disco and I was a bit nervous anyway but flying around and stuff um, and I fell backwards and put both my hands down to stop me and the sort of shudder went up my arms and I managed to fracture both my elbows. At first I didn't know, I went home, went to bed, woke up in the morning and couldn't lift my arms <laughs> and ended up in the hospital and they did an x-ray and said that's what had happened. And I don't think it was an intense enough incident for most people to have broken their elbows. And sort of ever since I've been much more careful I did recently catch my little finger at um, a fitness class when we were playing a silly game of um, grabbing each other's tops out of the back of their trousers and I caught my little finger and broke my finger then. So there's been a few things where I've noticed. So now I'm much more careful when it's icy on the floor, I walk really slowly, which is really annoying. Um, I have to be really careful in any sort of form of exercise really, so I'm careful with skiing. I have been skiing, but I'm kind of extra careful with that. Um, and also, I went cycling on a cycling holiday and came with my bike. Um, luckily, nothing was broken, but that has made me a bit more wary about that kind of thing. Um, and we spoke to a bit before about kind of um, you know, what, what led to recovery mm. and what made you recover. So, do you want to talk mm. a little bit about that kind of thing? Yeah. What it was that spurred you on to, to, to stop thinking that losing weight was so important and actually concentrate on having a healthy body and a healthy outlook? Yeah, I think on uh, having relapsed already, I was aware of how kind of fragile my recovery was. So the second time that I went into it, I did have a better attitude, I suppose. Um, being surrounded by other people who had eating disorders, I could also see that it's not necessarily something that just affects you for a couple of years. There are people who are anorexic for their lives, really, and they are surviving anorexics, they spend the rest of their days kind of living that very small life. When I started to recover the second time, I really started to enjoy life and going out and being with my friends, going out for dinner, going to drinks, parties, stuff like that, and, and really felt that that was the life that I wanted. And I didn't want this narrow, small existence of somebody with an eating disorder. And also, as I gradually sort of started entering my late 20s, it really dawned on me that actually what I really want is my own family. Yes, I've got my mum and my dad, which are great, but what I really want is to have my own family, to get married and to have children. And that couldn't be a reality if I was to carry on having an eating disorder. So that's what really spurred me on. I hadn't had periods for years. Obviously, I've got osteoporosis. Um, and there was no way that my body was, as an anorexic in a fit state, to get married, have children and have a full life. 
And so it's, it was kind of a priority thing for me. That's what I really wanted over and above my eating disorder. And that's what spurred me on really to get better. Um, and you had a bit of good news recently um, yeah. from your um, doctor. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, because I hadn't had a bone density scan for a while, I hadn't actually had a bone density scan at a normal weight for a long time. I've had my periods back now for about a year and a half. And my, I know that having my period does really help to rebuild the bones. I'm also really good about having calcium and have been running a lot. So that helps to rebuild your bone because any sort of weight bearing exercise can help. So I felt that it was a good time to have a bone density scan and see whether things had changed at all. And I got the results back last week to say that um, the bone density in my spine has improved by 13% which I was really surprised about because I didn't start recovering until my late 20s, and now 31, and I thought that maybe I wouldn't rebuild any bone. So I'm really pleased that I have, and it's made me feel more positive about the future and probably more confident about getting out there and doing stuff and being active. It's very difficult to realise it, but actually your body weight and your shape doesn't have as much of an impact on your happiness as you think and usually you can be very happy at any healthy weight and it's unlikely that really what you're unhappy about is your weight, it's usually something else and if you can actually like try and work that out and think about what would make you happier in your day to day life rather than thinking about changing your weight or your shape because if you look around you, there are all people who are happy at any weight and shape. And so it's not usually about that. It's just really important to be healthy. And actually getting to a point where you're underweight means that you're cold and you're miserable and you don't have any energy to do anything. And that you're not going to have fun and enjoy yourself. And there's no point in being thin and having to sit at home all the time because you don't have the energy to get out there and do anything. So I think the main thing is just to be healthy and to be happy and try not to worry about what other people are doing. So I think so many of us compare ourselves to other people and yeah, there are some girls who are naturally thin and can eat whatever they like and great for them, but there are some of us who aren't. But you need to find your own healthy body weight and shape and your, your own healthy, happy way of being.